Good morning and welcome to another Rose Red Homestead Adventure. You see in front of you four bags. Today we're going to be talking about meals in bags. And what that means is in each of these bags, I have the ingredients for a complete entree. So all I have to do is go out to our canning shelves out in the garage, grab a bag, come in, open it up, and I have everything in this bag that I need to make a meal. As I've mentioned in previous videos, I work full time and I have a very intense job. And sometimes when I come home, honestly, I think I have used all of the available brain cells during the day. And I don't even want to think about one more thing. So having these bags of meals ready to go so that I don't even have to think about it. I can just bring it in and dump it in the pan and heat it up or whatever it requires. It just makes it so delightful. A second reason that we do meals in bags is because we live in an earthquake area and we're about 400 years overdue for a big one. And so if any natural disaster or any other kind of a disaster might happen, one of the last things I want to be worried about is how I can put a meal together, either for myself or for neighbors or whatever. And having a whole collection of these on hand really gives peace of mind. I want to be able to not only feed my own family, but help out in the neighborhood if necessary. And my target is to have 50 of these. Well, I don't have 50 yet. I have about half of that. So today, we'll unpack these when we come back so that I can show you what they look like. These, this is all the variety that I have, four different varieties. And today, we're going to pack up two new varieties and add them to our shelves. So we'll be right back. chicken and rice soup, this is beef, rice, and lentil soup, and this is beef stroganoff and rice. So let's open these up so that you can see what is in them. So for the pulled pork and noodles, I have a pint of pulled pork, and I am going to do a video on how to do pulled pork. Let me pull these bags back just a little bit so that you'll be able to see the ingredients as we stack them in the front. So all this requires for me to do is, as I, as I open up the jar, this is still quite liquid, and, so, um, and it is in chunk form. And so what I would need to do is, as I took this out of the jar, I would take a couple of forks and shred this so that it would be pulled pork. And then the other thing that I have in here <clears throat> is a vacuum sealed package of wide egg noodles. Um, an interesting thing happened when we did this package of egg noodles. They're thick and wide, thankfully, because when I vacuum packed it, it cracked quite a few of the egg noodles. So I'm not sure if I use these noodles again that I would vacuum pack them. I may just put them in a regular baggie. So this is what is in the pulled pork and noodles package. Now I I staple these bags closed, and when I use them, I use a staple remover to remove the staples very carefully, because when I use everything in a bag, I will save these bags, they're labeled, and then I will refill them with the same thing. Now you can use any kind of a bag you wish. You can use the plastic bags that come from the grocery store. <clears throat> I like them to be just a little bit nice looking, and so I ordered these on Amazon, and these are just exactly the right size that fit out on my shelf. So this one is chicken and rice soup. So this one has a quart of home canned chicken soup. The chicken is about up to this line, and then it looks like there's carrots and celery and onions, and there is 
you probably can't make this out, but right here there is, I had put a dehydrated lemon in there for a little bit of extra uh, flavor. And then here is a vacuum sealed package of rice, although it looks like the vacuum seal is failing, but that's okay, this is still, um, it still works just fine. So that's what this one is. This is beef, rice, and lentil soup. So in this one, I have a package of dry soup mix. And this is rice, lentils, split peas, pearl barley, onions, and then I have a couple of bouillon cubes. I believe that those are beef bouillon cubes. Let me get this bag that has just fallen. I keep knocking things over here. Make that bottom flat again. Well, I'm just going to drop a can opener in the bottom to hold it down. There we go, that'll hold it flat. So beef, rice, and lentil soup. So there's the dried soup. Here is a can of diced tomatoes. And here is a pint of home canned hamburger. And so to make this one, I've written a few little instructions right on the lid. So it says simmer in six cups of water for 40 minutes and then add the beef. So there's my meal right there. And then in this last one is beef stroganoff and rice. And so here is a quart of my home canned beef stroganoff. Now this is very liquidy. There's about this much beef in it, so it's very beefy. There's mushrooms and onions and Worcestershire sauce. And um, the first thing that I would do here is um, pour the liquid into the pan, not putting the solid ingredients in until I thickened this up a little bit. You never ever want to put cornstarch or flour as thickening agents in soups or anything else that you can. It's too frothy and it uh, sometimes prevents the vacuum seal. So here is vacuum packed rice that will go with this. And then I have a couple of containers of powdered sour cream. And this makes this recipe so convenient. I don't have to worry about, oh my goodness, do I have sour cream in my refrigerator? I wanna make um, beef stroganoff tonight, so this prevents my having to stop at the store because everything is right here that we need for a very nice entree. So these are the meals and bags that we have on our shelf. And today we're going to also add to the variety by um, mixing together chicken, mushroom, and pasta soup, along with tomato beef lentil soup. So when I'll, I'll come right back and we'll have all of the ingredients set out to do some more packaging of meals in bags. Okay, we're back. And I have set out here all of the ingredients and things that we're going to need for chicken, mushroom, pasta soup, um, except for the mushrooms. Excuse me just a minute, I'm gonna go get the mushrooms. Okay, here we are. Set those right there. Now I think that we are ready. So I have here, I'm going to make dry soup mix. And when I do dry soup mix, sometimes I just use odds and ends jars and that's what these are. This is just a, a, a jelly jar. Someone gave us some jelly and this one, same thing here. And some kind of um, mismatched pint jars. So the dry soup mix will fit in these four jars. I'm doing four. And then um, I will be talking in just a moment about this piece of kitchen equipment. This is a vacuum sealer. Honestly, I should have purchased a vacuum sealer years ago. But as it is, I've only had this one for about six months and it is so versatile, I just love it. I wish I would have bit the bullet and um, purchased one of these years ago. And I could not do these meals in bags without this vacuum sealer. So I'll be demonstrating what we do there as well. So um, the first thing that the recipe calls for is one fourth of a cup of pasta. And I have in this jar some Assini di Pepe. That's Italian and I just massacred it. But it is the very, very tiny pasta that we use in frog eye salad. And that's what I want to use in my soup today. 
So I'm going to be putting a fourth of a cup in each of these jars. And so there's one fourth of a cup. I just spill some. Maybe pouring is better. It is much better. One fourth of a cup. One fourth of a cup. And this really swells huge. Well, not huge, but it swells up a lot. So a fourth of a cup is, is more than adequate. So there is the small pasta that I'm going to use. Next, it calls for a fourth of a cup of celery. Now, um, I and since this is a dry soup mix, I have to use everything that is dehydrated. And so I am going to be using some celery that I dehydrated, it looks like August last year. So um, this has been out in our freezer. So I'm going to be putting a fourth of a cup of dehydrated celery in. Well, and I didn't even need the funnel for that. It just went right in. And these dehydrated soups look very pretty in these jars. So it's always a lot of fun to pull those out. The next ingredient is a fourth of a cup of dehydrated carrots. Now I have not dehydrated carrots. I purchased this number 10 can at the store. This is a good thing to have on our shelves. So I'm going to be putting in a fourth of a cup of dehydrated carrots. These look kind of like carrot flakes. So let you see the inside here, they're fun. And I have a plastic lid that goes on the top of these so they don't um, spoil. And the next ingredient is two tablespoons of onion. Now this past summer, I dehydrated a lot of uh, Walla Walla sweet onions. Jim kept bringing them home from the grocery store and so I um, dehydrated them. And one of the best things I've ever done. Walla Wallas are so delicious and they dehydrate beautifully and so I'm putting in um, a couple of tablespoons of the dehydrated onions I had to check my recipe that I have pinned up on the wall over there so that I can see it so a couple of tablespoons of onion So this layered look is just lots of fun to, to look at. Okay, so those are done. And the next ingredient is a couple of chicken bouillon cubes. So um, I use the giant size when I'm doing dried soup. Um, so these are the, this is the size. And I'm just going to drop a couple down in there, right in their foil. And when I get ready to actually make the soup, of course I will remove the foil from the bouillon cubes so that they work the way they are supposed to. And then the rest is spices. I'm going to use, um, let me see, a fourth of a teaspoon of thyme. This is a new package of thyme. So a fourth of thyme, fourth of a teaspoon, and a fourth of a teaspoon of sage. Jim does all of our shopping and he always keeps me in spices and I'll have two or three unopened ones. So it's always nice. This is a fourth of a teaspoon of sage Again, I didn't use the funnel. And then a pinch of celery seed. When I told a friend of mine that my secret ingredient to wonderful potato salad is celery seed, she bought me a little bag of gourmet celery seed. And so I have really enjoyed this. And I'm just going to put a pinch of celery seed in here.
and then it calls for a pinch of garlic powder. I'm just going to put a couple of shakes in. And a bay leaf. My mother used to cook with bay leaves, and so this aroma coming up from this jar is very reminiscent of my mother's kitchen. It's kind of a fun thing. Oops, I forgot the shaker lid on this. Actually, that shaker lid was for something else, not for bay leaves. And then a little bit of black pepper. Notice that I am not putting any salt in. Jim and I are using, trying to do a much better job with the healthy lifestyle. So we're not using salt much. Okay. Um, then I have the mushrooms. These mushrooms I got from Costco. They are quite aromatic, dried gourmet mix mushrooms, and they're wonderful. So these will dehydrate as we are adding the water and cooking the soup. So I'm putting about a half a cup of mushrooms in. Probably the pint-sized jars are going to get a few more mushrooms than the odd-sized jars are. there mash it down a little bit this is so pretty all right look how pretty this long tall one is now the question is once I have these jars already, what do I do with them? Well, I'm going to vacuum seal them. And I have in this basket some rings and lids. These lids are previously used lids. I will save some of my used lids and wash them and reuse them for vacuum seal. This one says ghee, this one says applesauce, this one, these are, this is a blank one. And then the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to vacuum seal them. Now here is my little vacuum sealer. This particular brand is a Nutra Chef. It is a middle of the road priced one. I think I paid about $60 for it. They have some that are very, very fancy. I just, because I was unfamiliar with how they worked, I wanted to get just a, um, middle of the road one and then I bought the attachments that will um, vacuum pack jars. So this attachment fits over regular size lid, this attachment fits over a wide mouth lid. So if I open up my vacuum sealer there's a little place right here where I can plug the other end of this cord in and then before I put the ring on here I just put this little attachment over the top and I hit seal. Now it's sucking the air out. But it should not be taking that long, so I don't think this one is sealing. No, it is not. So let me try one of the other ones, and I'll work on this one later. This one should be okay.
away. It stopped on its own. That means it should be sealed. So I'm going to tip this off to the side. Oh, I need to release this. Yes. Did you hear that? That means it's sealed. And the gasket came off, so I'll have to put that in. Yes, it's very sealed. So now I can put the ring on this one. And this will be ready to go in the bag in just a moment. All right, I worked on the other little jelly jar. The shoulders were too narrow and it wasn't holding a vacuum. So I replaced the ingredients. I put them into a regular pint jar and it worked just fine. So I have bagged already two of these, but I wanted to save the last two to show you what I do. So here are the bags and I have labeled the bags. This says uh, chicken mushroom pasta soup. And so I'm going to put one jar of the soup, dry soup mix in here and one pint of home canned chicken. And that is everything that I need except for the water. And on the lids of these dry soup mixes, I have put four cups water. I, that's how I have labeled it. And so that tells me how much water I'm going to need to add when I um, dehydrate this soup. So coming home after a hard day work of work, I can just dump that soup mix into a pan, unwrap the chicken bouillon cubes, add four cups of water or a quart of water, let it simmer for a little bit, add the chicken, and, and including the liquid that is in the chicken, and we will have a wonderful nourishing soup. And because it's winter, and because actually it's snowing outside right now, it is a delightful supper evening for winter. So here's the third one, and now here's the last one for this particular recipe. So in goes the soup mix, in goes the pint of chicken, and I'm stapling these clothes. And so these are now ready to go outside on our shelves. So we'll be back in a minute, and this time we'll do tomato beef lentil soup. We're back with all the ingredients set out for tomato beef lentil soup. Before I go any further, I want to show you this book. It is called Meals in a Jar, Quick and Easy, Just Add Water, Homemade Recipes by Julie Langill, and I'm not sure that I said her last name correctly. Um, I need to give credit to her for the ideas that went into my meals in bags. I have used some of her recipes, but given my own little twists to them, so they're not exactly her recipes. I have done, I've known about meals in jars for a long, long time. This is, a, this is a pretty good book. I've enjoyed it quite a bit and I certainly have used some of her recipe ideas. So I'm gonna set this aside. <clears throat> These are the four ingredients that we just love to have in a lot of our soups, especially for winter time. It just makes them so very hearty. Um, this is lentils and rice and split peas and pearl barley. All four of these will be used in the dry soup mix for uh, tomato beef lentil soup. So we'll start with that and I'm going to fill these jars. I have four pint jars. I switched jars while I was off camera to make sure I had good pint jars because of the problem we had with the vacuum seal on the other one. So it calls for a fourth of a cup of each of these four. So that's now what I'm going to do. And fortunately, my little fourth cup measure can fit right down in these large wide mouth jars. So, I'm going to put the jars out here and I'm going to use the funnel. So here's a fourth of lentils, a fourth of rice, a fourth of split peas, and a fourth of pearl barley. And again, the layering just makes these so pretty. So again, we've got lentils, rice, split peas, and pearl barley. I grew up on lentils. My dad just loved lentils. So we very often had lentils and he made the best split pea soup. He's gone now, sadly, and I never did get his recipe because as a child, I did not appreciate it as much as I do now. 
but every time I see split pea soup, I think of my dad. Dad was a very distinguished college professor, and so it was fun to see him out in the garden with his hands in the dirt and also with his favorite recipes. Okay, so we have now the basic grains in here. The next thing I'm going to add is a couple of tablespoons. Again, these are my dehydrated Walla Walla sweet onions. <clears throat> so two tablespoons of onions in each one. Oh, the smell of these is just divine. I'm going to be so, I have only one more baggie of these and I'm going to be so sad when they run out. I can't remember if I put two. It doesn't look like I put two in those. If I have a few more onions in them, it's not going to matter at all. All right. Um, then the next is going to be a couple of tablespoons of beef bouillon. Now I don't have cubes today, but I do have the Costco size beef bouillon giant jar. So I'm going to put two tablespoons of each, and I better count these. One and two. I will be adding six cups of water to this dry soup mix. So I'm going to need a couple of tablespoons of the beef bouillon. Two and one, two. One of the flavorings that we really like in our soups is Italian seasoning. And so I'm going to put a, a teaspoon of Italian seasoning in each of these. I spill a little bit extra into the jar, so be it. Then, as always, one of mother's bay leaves. Okay, and that completes the dry soup portion of what we're going to be putting in the bags here. So let me get some of these things out of the way and we will vacuum seal these jars. not these jars, these jars with the soup mix in them. So again, I have this basket of washed lids and rings. And again, these are previously used lids. They work just fine. Okay, so I'm going to Vacuum seal these by putting that attachment in place, hooking it to the dehydrator, pressing the button. Oh, it would help to plug it in. Try this again. Okay, let's see if we hear the swish. Yep, that one is sealed. Replace this blue gasket that keeps pulling out when I pull the lid off. Oh yeah, nice seal. These are working much better. That 
such a nice sound. This is the same sound that you want to hear with all of your canned goods as well. That nice tink. All right, this is the last one. And this should be it. Yes, seal just fine. Tink, tink. So we're going to set these aside. One of the things that this recipe calls for is also a half a cup of small pasta. So I am using the, I forgot the name of it, the frog eye salad pasta. And except that I have a half a cup of orzo left, so I am going to use in one of the bags this orzo. So before, because this soup has the rice, the peas, the barley, and the lentils, it's going to take it a long time to cook, to simmer before it's ready to eat. And so I don't want to add the pasta into these bottles so that the pasta won't overcook. Therefore, I'm going to put the pasta in a separate bag and I'm going to vacuum seal it and just put it inside the bag so that I can cook the soup for the amount of time needed for these to get almost soft. Then I will add the pasta so that when the pasta is done the whole soup pot will be finished. So that's what I'm going to do next. Now um, as Jim and I have learned how to use our um, vacuum sealer I've been in charge of cutting the bags. We have a roll of bag material that is sealed on each side, but the two ends are open and inevitably I cut bags that are too small. So I save those to use them hopefully at a future time. And so I have about four of these that are a little bit too small for other things. I'm hoping that they will work. If they don't work, I'll be cutting some new ones right here as well. So we're going to try this. I will, first of all, this one, as you can see, does not have a bottom seal yet. So I'm just going to put it barely inside, close the lid of the vacuum sealer. And then hit seal. And there's a blue light that is lit. When it's done, it will not be lit anymore. And it looks like this one sealed just fine. Woo, hot, hot. So the next thing I need to do then is to, I'm going to put my orzo in this one. So I've already measured this. I know it's a half a cup. So I'm just going to dump it in and then we'll see if we can get it to vacuum seal but I may have to cut larger bags. Okay, so here's the orzo, and I'm going to hold it carefully right here and close this lid. And then this time I'm going to hit back seal. And it's vacuuming just fine. Hopefully it is also sealing. Well, let's check it out. Ah. Beautiful. Okay, so now this is all hard and vacuum sealed. So we'll put this over here, ready to put in the bag. Here's another one that needs a bottom seal. So we'll do that really quickly. Hit seal. And this takes just a couple of seconds. And that's done. And this time we're going to be putting in the Asini di Pepe. Oh, I remembered the name. A Cine di Pepe, Italian, and a half a cup, and set it in here. And back seal. Looks like it's working.
perfect. Ah, nice seal. I don't know if you can see that across here, but it's nice and sealed. This is just as hard as a rock now. So let's we'll put this one over here. Uh, this one already has a bottom seal. So we'll put in a half a cup of the Asini de Pepe. Oh, this is gonna be tight. We'll see if this one will seal or whether we'll have to cut a new one. Oh, looks like it might be working. Although it's taking a little too long, so it may not be sealing. No, this is too long. And it did not seal. So we'll try this bag. This one is already sealed on the bottom. So if this one isn't even big enough for a half a cup of um, little tiny pasta, that one's going in the garbage. So we'll see if this one works. And while that works, I'm going to cut another one, see if I can get it big enough. Well, I think that one did work. Well, it's sealed, but it didn't vacuum for some reason. But it will be fine, it's still sealed in there, so I'm just gonna use it anyway. This one now, of course, has to be sealed on the bottom. Seal. Worked. It's vacuuming. And it looks like it's sealed. Hooray! There we go. Hard as a rock. Okay, now I'm going to set this aside, bring the bags over, and we're ready to load up these bags. So here are the bags, pre-labeled. Got the stapler here. Now let's see what goes in these bags. Now I have put six cups of H2O, six cups of water on the lids here so I will know. So in each one of these I will be putting one bag of the soup mix. One packet of pasta. One can of tomato paste, one can of diced tomatoes. And one pint of beef chunks. These are home canned beef chunks. I've already done a video on how to do these. So this is also going right down in the bag. So this is a very hefty bag, hefty meal. Line up these folds so it will staple down. Actually, I can't wait to try these. And this is what the bag looks like. One more, just to show you what goes in, and then I'll finish the rest of it with our pan. So, vacuum packed jar of dried soup mix, pasta, 
one can of tomato paste, one can of tomato diced dices, and one pint of home canned beef chunks. It is so wonderful to have these meals outside on our shelves so that at the drop of a hat, for whatever reason, whether it's I'm tired after work, whether it's a snowstorm like today and I just don't feel like cooking anything else and this would be perfect for a snowy day, whatever the reason, I now have eight more bags out there on my way to getting 50. I hope you have enjoyed this idea and you may find it practical for your own use. Thank you so much for joining us and we'll see you next time for another Rose Red Homestead adventure.